Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. Thanks for joining me today. I want to share with you some thoughts that have been on my mind lately, especially about the blessings and the spiritual journey that we're all on. It's you know pretty cool when you get to think about it. So let's dive in. We want to grow out of babyhood. All of us do. We want to grow out of being little children spiritually and to grow up and to be in full stature in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we want to grow, and that's one reason I try to pass along everything that the Lord has passed on to me. I was blessed as a new believer to have a pastor who made himself available to me to help me to learn and to teach me about prayer and about the Word of God, and he would model for me what it is like to have Jesus as Lord of your life. I wasn't raised in a born-again family. I was the only one I knew in our family that had gotten born again, who had gotten saved. There wasn't anybody in my family who could teach me or help me with some of those things. And it meant the world to me that my pastor taught the word of God plainly and clearly and in a simple way that as a new believer, I could understand. That's how I learned the things of God. And that's the only way I know how to teach the things of God plainly and simply, and to live out what I've learned in the Bible and what I've been taught by the Holy Spirit and what I've experienced in my personal walk with the Lord. And I want so badly for you to know these things, for you to experience them yourself and to have them as guiding principles in your life. You know, we all start off spiritually as babies. We all start off the same way, no matter how smart we are in the things of this world, no matter what certifications or trainings or degrees we have, we all start off spiritually. We come into the kingdom of God as newborn babies. And we know how babies are. You know, babies can't do very much. They cry, they whine a lot, and you have to look out for them. They're easily hurt, of course, and we don't want them to hurt themselves or to eat something that will make them sick or to get hurt in any other way. And when we get more mature, our temperaments even out. We lose all that drama, thank God. You can't be spiritually mature and emotionally immature. We get stabilized, we get steady, We're not easily offended as we get spiritually mature. We learn to walk in love towards other people. We cut them some slack, and we know that the Bible says that love is not easily offended. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. When we get more mature, we get more easy to get along with. We become sweeter. We become more flexible. You know, it's immature fruit that's hard and bitter. Mature fruit is more juicy and mellow and sweet. And this doesn't have to do with how many years a person has been hanging around the churches or the body of Christ. It doesn't have to do with how many years a person has been a Christian. It has to do with spiritual and emotional maturity. You know, I love this Bible. I love finding out what God says and what he's done and what he says about his people. And I love finding out what he promises and what he's already done. God has given me a heart to reach people who don't know Jesus Christ and to strengthen, build up, and edify those who do. The first chapter of Ephesians tells us about seven things that God has already done for every one of us as believers. Number one is Ephesians 1 and verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. God has already blessed you and he's already blessed me. He said he's already done it with special things. It doesn't say he's going to bless you or he might bless you. It said he has already blessed you. It's not a future promise. It's a present reality. It's not a matter of praying and fasting and waiting patiently for these promises to come to pass. They're already ours. But here's the catch. You know, it's one thing to have the blessings, and it's another thing to actually live them out. You know, it's like having a gift card in your wallet that you never use. You've got to know what you've got. And 
You've got to know what you believe and believe it's really yours and then use it and make it part of your life and benefit from it. You have to know what he has blessed you with and you have to then believe or have faith that he means what he says. And then we have to release our faith and receive his blessings. You know, I don't want much in life. I just want what belongs to me in the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean that you're walking in all those blessings just because you have them or that you're operating in them. But I'll tell you, God has already blessed you. It's a done deal. He's already provided for you. Number two is Ephesians chapter one and verse four. It says, according as he has chosen us. God has chosen you personally. Jesus said in John's gospel, chapter 15 and verse 16, you have not chosen me, I've chosen you. And I have ordained you that you should go and bear forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And that whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, Jesus says, he'll give it to you. Because herein is my Father glorified that you bear or produce much fruit. So we're not only blessed, we are also chosen, thank God. God chose us to live in this time, what to many is the darkest hour of human history, and he has chosen us to bring his message, his salvation, his deliverance to frustrated, hurting, broken, and lost people. Wherever you are, whoever you are, Jesus has a call on you. You're not who others say you are. That isn't what you're limited to being, what they say you are. You are who Jesus says you are, and only you can fulfill what God has set before you to do and to become. Number three is that you have been adopted into the family of God. Moving on there to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, we're talking about adoption here. And not just any adoption, you and I are handpicked by God himself through Jesus' sacrifice. It's like he's saying, I want you in my family to show the world you're mine. You know, people can have a baby that they didn't plan for. It happens pretty regularly. It's not uncommon for someone to have an unplanned pregnancy. But I want to tell you this, you don't ever have an unplanned adoption. Adoption never happens by mistake. Adoption is always planned. It's about a choice. It's about the one who is adopting selecting, wanting, loving, picking, and choosing that child they are adopting. You're not an accident in the family of God. You're picked, chosen, and adopted. Number four, in verse six, he says that he has already accepted us. It says here that we are accepted in the beloved, in Jesus. Now, in ourselves, we're not acceptable, but in Christ, we are already acceptable and accepted, not because of us, but because of him. And you might feel unacceptable, like you don't fit in or that you're inferior and nobody really cares about you. That's the way a lot of people feel. You're not alone. So many people feel rejected and criticized, not cared about. And I'm here to tell you, God wants you and he accepts you. There's the whole acceptance thing there in verse six. We're accepted in the beloved, that's in Jesus. And it's not about us being so lovable, trust me. We're not. It's all about him and his love for us. So if you're feeling down, out of place, or just plain rejected, remember this. You are wanted, chosen, and accepted by the highest power and authority there is. And people may criticize you, but it's not what people think about you that's important. It's what God knows about you. That's what's important. He has chosen us that we should be holy and without blame. When God gets a hold of you, he makes you holy and he causes you to live 100% for Jesus. Salvation isn't about having a religion. It's about having an eternal life, a relationship with Jesus. It's not about you living the perfect life or turning over a new leaf and trying to clean up your life. No, salvation is from the Lord. He changes our lives by the new birth and by his spirit. He forgives our sins completely. And he gives us a new start with a new heart. He made us accepted. You are acceptable to God. Verse seven says that we are redeemed or we've been purchased or bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus. 
and we now belong to God. We're his property. We're all forgiven for all of our past sins and our past foolishness, according not to our grace, which we would run out of before about an hour, but according to the riches of his grace. If you're not in a good church, you need to get in a good church that preaches the Bible, the Bible, the way it is. If you're not being taught the word of God, get where you can be taught the word of God that will fill you with faith and bring you to Jesus. One thing you can do, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You know, we bring out a video once a week and we just want it out there with some simple, simple Bible truths that are plain and evident. And I try to explain it in a way it Maybe an eight-year-old, well, for me, probably a seven-year-old would understand it because the Bible is God's simple truth, that word of God. So I just want you to know that we appreciate you, and I hope you subscribe to our channel here and hit that notification bell, that notification bell, so you can be notified every time we bring you a new message. And also ask the Lord, by the way, who you need to share these messages with, and then just take a few seconds and share them. Just hit that little share button. And I want to teach you and help you. I want to help you get your faith level up, and God will help you find out who you are in Jesus Christ. Number five, verse eight, Ephesians 1 verse eight says, he has abounded towards us in all wisdom. You know, all wisdom is available to us because Christ has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 29 and 30 say that. Jesus is my wisdom. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my sanctification. You and I get the wisdom of God through the Bible and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we have access to all of the wisdom of God if we will listen to him and if we'll act on it. Number six, Ephesians 1 and verse 9 says, he has made known to us his will. He's not hiding it from us. He's not hiding his will from us. He's making it known to us. If we will draw near to him, and if we'll listen, listen to the Holy Spirit, when we're reading the word and meditating on it, we will begin to recognize the, the will of God and know what we should do and what we should not do. We're not staying children. We're growing up into spiritual adults. And you know, God isn't playing hide and seek with his will. It's out there. He's revealed it for us to discover. All we need to do is get closer to him and listen up, and the Holy Spirit will guide us. It's all about growing up, not just growing old. Number seven is I'm getting ready to land this plane. Verse 13 says that he has sealed us with the Holy Spirit, having given us the earnest of our inheritance or the down payment on what is to come. He sealed us with the Holy Spirit of God. God has put his mark on us, signed his name on us with the Holy Spirit who lives in our bodies. The world sees the difference that God makes in your life, even if they don't comment. They notice that mark of God on you no matter where you are or what you're doing. They can tell there's something different about you, some difference in you that comes from God's hand on your life. The Holy Spirit is God's earnest money or his down payment, his deposit. Get this. The Holy Spirit himself is the down payment that God put down to make sure we get delivered to heaven, to make it a done deal, so to speak. Earnest money is down payment money, which means that if you give the deposit, the down payment money, the earnest money, don't follow through, guess what? You lose your down payment. And what did God use as his earnest, as his down payment? The Holy Spirit. So do you think God is going to lose the Holy Spirit? Of course not. That's impossible. So what's the takeaway from all this? It's simple. Know that God has done good things for you. He's laid it all out, and it's a shame to miss any of it. God's doing more than you think he's doing, and God is more faithful than you're giving him credit for. You need to know what God has done for you. There's no reason to miss even one thing that God has prepared for us. My calling is to help you to understand who you really are in Christ Jesus and what you have in Christ Jesus. And the greatest tragedy is to die and miss God after all he's done by sending his son to die for you on the cross.
He paid the price. He paid your price, the price of your sin debt and mine. And then God raised him from the dead for you. And that's why he ought to become your Lord and my Lord. God wants to save you. He wants to grow you. He wants to stabilize or establish you. And all you have to do is make Jesus the Lord of your life. And you'll hunger and thirst after him and his word. You know, if you're feeling the pull of the Spirit of God and you're ready to dive into the things of God, you can begin with a simple prayer. It's your first step on an incredible journey. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for my friend right now that you would guide them, that you would bless them, that they would say, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. Forgive me for my sins. I want you as my Lord and Savior. Lead me and guide me in all my ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Know that we're praying for you. Our prayer team prays for you. I pray for you. And I always want you to pray for me because I need it. Thanks so much. God bless. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family. <laughs>